Hey, what's going on out there? I'm Sean Devine. Hope you all are doing well. In this tutorial, we are going to be breaking down the process of optimizing the frequency response of your vocal microphone. So no matter what mic you find yourself using, whether that's a budget mic or maybe something a little bit more expensive that you're just not getting the results you want out of, I have some very simple tips and techniques to level up the tone of that vocal mic so that once you get into the DAW, you're gonna have a lot less work to do in the mix. I don't got time to reflect on the reasons that you gotta hate on my prayers. I just keep sending them high. Hopes of my dreams, they've been touching the sky, but it's only the start, he's reshaping my heart, so my purpose is worth it, shed light in the dark, he consumed. Now there's a lot of engineers out here who the solution is just to throw a different mic at it. They have extensive mic lockers, expensive microphones most of us don't have the luxury of just reaching into there and grabbing a ten thousand dollar microphone to fix the problem luckily you don't necessarily need to do that you don't need to go throw out your current microphone try this first before we get started i want to quickly tell you about this tutorial sponsor which is austrian audio makers of the oc18 cardioid condenser mic that's the microphone that you're seeing and hearing in front of me right now and the one i've been using almost exclusively in my sessions over the past month or so it's versatile it has a frequency response that is quite favorable for many different vocal types it takes eq really well and we're going to talk about some of these aspects in the tutorial why a mic like this will save you a tremendous amount of time it is very detailed it has a lot of subtlety it handles high spl performances uh, wide-ranging dynamics things like hip-hop and rap vocals very well we actually use used it in a session uh, last week and not only was I impressed with it but the artist not knowing I was doing a mic test said what mic is this I really really like the sound of this if you're in the market for a new condenser microphone I'd highly recommend the OC18 I will put a link in the description below this is a mic that I'll be using in my own work moving forward so shout out to Austrian Audio for sending this over and sponsoring the tutorial let's go ahead and dive in so for example purposes today I'm going to hook up one of my more problematic microphones in terms of frequency response I know that a lot of you out there are utilizing this this is the Neumann TLM 103. It's a very capable microphone, a popular microphone. However, it's quite interesting in terms of the frequency response because it has some dramatic boosts in the top end as well as some things going on in the low end. So I think this is going to be a great example for us today in terms of optimizing that response. All right, so we've got the 103 set up. How do you find the frequency response of your vocal microphone? Luckily, most microphone manufacturers will post diagrams of the frequency response on their websites. If I scroll down on the 103, we get a nice frequency response representation here. And the first thing you're going to notice is that uh, classic boost for the 103 that starts at 5k and goes all the way up to 15k so there is a lot of high-end emphasis which for certain voices and for certain sources that's going to add a lot of detail you can hear right now it brings out just a lot of nuance to the voice however if you're like me and you have crisp s's you have a vocalist with crisp s's or maybe not as much dynamic control you're going to find that this mic will get harsh very quickly you can hear my s's right now they stand out they can get quite whistly with this microphone taking this a step further we can jump over to a website called recordinghacks.com i'll put a link in the description if you want to check it out but you can find your microphone and they will give you the frequency response graph but if you click on that we can then make a comparison so let's say we were looking to get a sound more like the u87 neumann which is a little bit more smooth rounded in the top end not quite as hype let's just type neumann and we'll find the cardioid version of the u87 and you see here we get a nice comparison that boost is much more subtle in the u87 so now that you've taken a closer look at the frequency response of your microphone and you have a better understanding of what might be causing issues for your vocals or the source it's not complementing now we can go in and very simply utilize an eq to do some counter moves to tame some of these boosts and some of these things but i like to utilize a hardware eq here with the neve i will process various signals and vocals with that before hitting the daw subtly to create less work for myself once i get into the mixing process but it's the same thing don't worry about this right now if you don't have a hardware eq i'm going to show you software options as well as also you know taking that 
uh, up a notch that actually makes it more powerful in the DAW. But right now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn on the EQ and I'm going to dial the high mid frequencies up to around 7K, which is where a lot of this uh, top end here on the 103 lies. And I'm going to open up the Q so we get a wide Q. We're going to be controlling uh, a lot more frequencies with that wide Q. And then I'm going to take out about three or four dB and immediately you can already hear that that top end just gets a lot smoother. So if I turn it off, this is with no EQ, you can hear my S's are quite whistly. And if I turn it on, it sounds already like a different mic with that top end dialed in. I'm also going to go ahead and just dial in the high pass filter. We'll turn that a little bit just so that we can control some of the low end of this microphone, which can be quite heavy depending on the room. We get a much more vintage, much more warm sound that's going to take EQ better in the DAW and it's just going to be easier to work with in the mixing process. So for the software, it's going to be the same approach here. I have the Waves VEQ4, which is just a nice Neve style EQ, and we'll do the exact same thing I did on the hardware. I'm just going to turn the high mid frequency up here to 6.8 and we're going to take out about 3 or 4 dB. And you're going to be able to hear immediately that that top end just becomes a lot more smooth. This is straight into the DAW with the TLM-103. And then if I turn on the VEQ-4, roll off a little bit at 6.8, the S's are a lot smoother. Let's also dial in our high pass filter. I'm going to put this at about 82, get rid of some of that mud and murk. And then we'll take out a little bit of 100 and immediately already sounds like a different microphone just with a little bit of pre-processing. So that's with it off. And once again, this is with it on. Very simple process, but also very powerful in terms of shaping the sound of our microphone. The software here, this is non-destructive. So I can turn this off and you're not going to be pre-processing in the way that I would with hardware. If you're not as comfortable with a hardware EQ, that's gonna be a lot like tracking with hardware compression. You don't wanna over-bake that before before it gets into the DAW and have something that you're not going to be able to fix later on. So using a software plugin EQ, especially when you're doing something deductive or you're attenuating here, this is going to be just as good of an option. So don't worry about, you know, having a hardware EQ for this approach. What's going to make the software realm or the plugin realm even more powerful than using hardware EQ is that we can utilize a dynamic processor like Pro-Q3 to tame the frequency response of some of these microphones like the 103. So for instance, if I go ahead and I set a plot here around 7K, 8K, somewhere in there, we're gonna go down to the dynamic section and I'm gonna reduce this quite a bit to about 10 dB, somewhere in there, but you'll notice that we're only getting about 6 dB of reduction. And then you can adjust the Q accordingly so that we don't lose detail across everything but just in that really S-y section. So if I turn this off now, it sounds like this. Again, whistly S's. So with a dynamic processor like this, we're gonna retain more of that signal and not take out you know, so much of the detail when we tame the high end. But I can also do the same thing with the low end. I'm just gonna set a low cut here uh, with a pretty steep slope going up at about 100. And then I'm going to set a plot here in this 250 range and we'll just dynamically control that as well so that we get some reduction. And once again, this mic starts to sound like a significantly warmer, uh, more pleasant, more inviting vintage mic. Doesn't even sound like a 103 at this point. Uh, let's just go here. I'm going to just lay down a little bit of a, a rap verse just so that you can hear the difference. But if I disable this, Readmit me, I'm a patient in a booth, sharing truth with the youth, ah, yeah. I don't got time to reflect on the reasons that you gotta hate on my prayers. I just keep sending them high. Hopes in my dreams, they've been touching the sky, but it's only the start. He's reshaping my heart, so my purpose is worth it. Shed light in the dark, he consumed. And this is with my dynamic processing here. Let me go make sure this is at zero. And I'm gonna widen the cue just a touch. Let's hear what that sounds like. Readmit me, I'm a patient in the booth, sharing truth with the youth, ah, yeah. I don't got time to reflect on the reasons that you gotta hate on my prayers. I just keep sending them high. Hopes in my dreams, they've been touching the sky, but it's only the start. He's reshaping my heart, so my purpose is worth it. Shed light in the dark, he consumed. This love is everywhere, all the time you've been focused on the fear, no more. 
So just with two plots there on Pro-Q3, we're able to dynamically optimize the frequency response of the 103. Sounds a lot better while I'm tracking. I feel more inspired because my S's aren't so sharp and hitting me in the ears. And it just sounds like a much nicer mic, something that's going to work so much better in the mixing process and it's going to save me some time because i'm not going to have to go in and as heavily ds i'm not going to have to go in there and cut as much and try to tame a lot of the problematic frequencies that are coming out with this on my vocal all right y'all so we've taken a look at how to first identify what the frequency response is of your vocal microphone but then using that information that we find we can utilize some very simple eq moves that will go a long way in giving you a frequency response that's more complementary to your vocals or whatever source you're trying to capture. I am boosting a lot less. I'm actually attenuating on the way in and I'm attenuating before I start mixing a lot more these days because so many of these mics already have a lot of top end information and a lot of boosts and accentuating. So a lot of times attenuating and sort of taming things is going to give you a, uh, a result that works for more situations, more vocal types, more sources, and it's just going to make your work a lot less time consuming. If you learn anything in the video, please like, subscribe, and consider sharing. Hit that notification bell for more. We'll talk to you soon.